Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Today we have our special contributor, our guest, Bill Fabrega. And uh, John, what are we going to be discussing today? Well, Michelle, thank you for joining us again. And uh, because you are our love coach, mm. um, I was reading about, uh, I, it was an article, I guess it was on your website, about uh, things to do to spice up your relationship. So I wanted, and, and it was a good article, great article, it obviously got me interested. I thought, uh, because the nature of articles are they are condensed and they're short, you know, they're edited well. I thought, since we have a different format here, we could take the opportunity to discuss some of those in depth. Um, things to do to spice up your relationship. If you're in a relationship, you will need to spice it up at some time or another. What what, what do you think are the best ways, the most universal ways that people can spice up a relationship yeah well obviously there's the sky's the limit right on what what's possible to do and it, you know these might not work for everybody but these are the ones that i think are really important so we can yeah let's dive into it we can go into some of them and i think it's important because like you said a relationship always needs sort of tending and if we're not really working on it and improving it sometimes it's kind of sliding backwards so and that's not what we want right so we want to be enjoying each other so the yeah. first one i pretty much um I suggest is to express love more. And what I mean by that is we all have ways of expressing our love to our partner. And sometimes we express it in a way that maybe they don't really receive it or get it. And many of you maybe have probably heard of the five love languages, but I really encourage you to take a look at that. There's a website there. You can um, take the quiz and find out what your primary love languages are. So there's touch, words of affirmation, there's acts of service, and oh my God, I can't believe I'm forgetting the last one. Well, anyway, you, you, you know, you gifts, you, gifts, because that's not mine, so I, that doesn't uh, ring true for me. Gifts, yeah. I, offering gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, people, uh, we we have our own um, love language, if you will. What's what the web website? It's called Five yeah, Languages called of five, Love. The number five, lovelanguages.com. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a good website. I'm, I'm going to check that out, but. Um, I know we all have different ways of expressing uh, or maybe different preferences. It's not that we're not capable of uh, giving gifts or uh, expressing verbally or whatever. But um, I know that, uh, for instance, my wife and I have different ways of expressing our love. And you don't always receive the message from the other person's method. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> it, right? You know? So you might think you're doing something really wonderful for your wife and you've, you know, uh, cleaned the garage or, you know, done yeah. something that she was wanting you to do. But um, maybe that's not really the way that really like she really receives it. Maybe she wants quality time spent together or she maybe wants to be appreciated for something she said or the way she is in the world or something. Right. So it's important to we need to know what ours are and we need to know what our partners are. And then we need to be able to like, give the link. You know, the, but sometimes there's a primary language, but sometimes we have more than one, obviously, that are the top ones. So it's good to know what those are. Sure. And are, uh, do you find that most people are um, able to use more than one language? So if my primary language is verbal, you are you know, talking about? Hi, honey, love you. You know, okay. love, how you doing? Love you. If that's my primary love language. Um, Am I able to typically, you know, generally speaking, am I able to use others or do we have to really go out of our way to learn more than one language? Well, I think both. It can really depend. Right. So I'm thinking in my relationship early on, I really like words of affirmation and, and touch. So those two are kind of up at the top. And my partner, Dave, it wasn't his natural way of expressing love to me. So it was really kind of missing. And I kind of had to like we had to have a little conversation about that to just, you know, I, I like to be told that I, that I look really nice today or, you know, yeah. that I, I love being with you or whatever. And it just wasn't something that he used in his, his um, former relationship. So it's just interesting, you know, we get in these habits, right? And it's good to like 
get clear on what our partner wants. And sometimes I suppose this could change over time. Like over time, we might really appreciate something more than what we used to, a different way of relating. Sure. And we might get bored with um, the with, way with we're John expressing. blowing kisses at me all the time. I mean, that's, <laughs> I'm revealing, that's, that's his way of, and I'm saying, really, you know, this could be recorded. Yeah. Which, which is why Art, we put the guest in the middle box so right. you and I don't get too close. To it. Right. <laughs> um, so that's so five love languages, huh? That's interesting. I, I it makes so much sense when you say it, but I've never heard of it before. Mm. And what about yeah. uh, are there any other uh, uh, really big ones uh, of uh, tips of of uh, paying attention to besides just languages? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, you want to we'll move to the next tip. So the other sure. one really is about trying new things. And this seems maybe obvious, but it's like we get into a maybe a rut as a couple to, oh, we go to the movies or we, you know, watch this show. And, you know, and that's all good. Sometimes it's nice to have these things that we love doing together. But but it's really important to kind of discover fresh. Like, I mean, I literally recommend brainstorming without censoring like a list of enjoy, enjoyable things. <laughs> enjoyable things you'd like to do together yeah. and you know nothing is too ridiculous or silly and this can, too, can include vacations or workshops or classes or you know cooking meals together or you know maybe you're already doing that but maybe a special meal you might put together and also of course sensual and sexual activities which we're going to get into a little more later but um you know if one of you is usually the person that starts the activity like oh let's go do this let's go do that it's like let the other person drive for a change and let them come up with something that they'd like to do. And I really recommend having a running list and you just keep adding to the list and experimenting and, you know, try to be a good sport if you, you know, oh, I don't really want to go to that event, but, you know, maybe someday you'll change your mind and just to kind of, um, to spice it up a bit. Well, it, it seems to me that, um, you, you almost have to be, going back to the languages you almost have to tell the other person, okay, it's your turn to do this. <laughs> well, you that, know, because that's, pretty, that's pretty romantic. Well, okay. It's your time well, to maybe, in, initiate, John, because I was nice to you last week. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can ask. I mean, I'm big on like asking or requesting because it just yeah. sounds so much more like an invitation. Oh, I'd love it if you came up with something for us to do this weekend. Right. You know, I, I trust you. Let me know what it is and, and, and I'm in, you know, or something like that. Sure, um, sure. So, yeah, because usually it's always kind of, sometimes it defaults to just one person in the relationship who's kind of the social director or the planner. And uh, right. it's great and, to and both that people happens, to be involved. That happens sexually, too. Uh, Absolutely. When we, get, when we get intimate, we get into the habit. Uh, all people get into the habit of doing what works, you know. Right. Well, maybe sometimes after a while you get bored with what works and it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> right, right. Or even it does work, and that's great, but it's also good to go off-road a little bit and explore something different that you both want to try. And even if it's a big, like, you know, fail or whatever you want to call it, it's never really a fail because you had the experience together. Maybe you end up laughing. Maybe you're like, well, maybe not that, or maybe next time we could do it this way, or who knows, you know, but it's yeah. just it's good to be in that playful spirit, which is actually my next tip, actually, is to be playful together, right? Oh, that's good. Wait, so wait, the second tip was Michelle goes off road. I like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what is your next tip? Well, uh, being playful. So the other one was kind of trying new things and, you know, it kind of dovetails into being playful, but basically bringing more playful and playfulness and humor into your relationship. And this can be, you know, with comedy or, you know, laughter, pillow fights, wrestling, tickling, I don't know, joking, you know, playing games of some sort, whatever, like just ways to have fun together. Think of like when you were a kid and silly, yeah. or maybe early in your relationship, things you like to do that were really fun to do. And it's easy to just, you know, oh, we're grown up now. We're, you know, we're in the second half of life. It's like, no, this is so important. Where's that little kid in each of you and bring that part out. Yeah, it's a, a playfulness it is a difficult thing to to do if you're not doing it spontaneously. And some people aren't spontaneously playful. Um, I, I think of a uh, bad analogy, but uh, somebody who's giving a speech, uh, who doesn't give speeches, 
they have to look up and find a joke to open <laughs> up the speech. Oh my God, I've got to, I got to open up with a joke. I got to open up with a joke. And then they go search for a joke and it never, because they're, it's not them. It never comes off well. You know, you don't have to start a speech with a joke. So spontaneity seems to me to be pretty important in the playfulness part of it, or, or maybe you just need to fake it, <laughs> fake being spontaneous. How do you how do you encourage your partner to be spontaneous and and, and playful? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it is easy to get into the sort of a serious mode of life with work and challenges and different things going on. And um, it's good to just, you know, I don't know, teasing, play, tickling, something that just breaks the energy of what's going on. And usually, you know, maybe one person can be the instigator there, but to kind of even sit down and like, wow, well, what could we do that would be silly and fun? So it's kind of, it takes some intentionality, you know, because basically what I want to say is being spontaneous takes some intentionality to it because we need to be really be thinking about, wow, this would be fun. How do we do this? You know, I'm feeling really stressed now. I don't feel well physically. There's something going on for me. How do we make it into a game or how do we, you know, it's about bringing creativity to things too. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking here that, You've given us uh, like three great tips uh, for us all yep. to be thinking about. And it's almost like we should uh, tell everybody, okay, now go out and try these. There'll be a quiz. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, but this is, Art, this is the kind of quiz I want to take. Right. I and be, I so I, I'm suggesting that we all go out and um, uh, try one or more of these and then uh, take a self quiz and uh, then come back and have Michelle get into some more stuff. I bet, I bet you haven't even given us the best ones yet. You've got, you've got other <laughs> well, tips as well. You have a few tips left? Absolutely, yeah. And, and like, who knows what the best ones are? Whichever ones land for you, you know, try one, try a couple, you know, take what you want, leave the rest, right? But um, I'm just trying to give you some ideas for that, so. Yeah. Great, all right. Well, next time then, let's, let's continue with part two. Who knew there was even going to be a part two? Let's continue with part two of, um, of finding that, what do we call it? Uh, finding your sexuality or uh, spicing up your relationship. Yeah. Good. Right. We'll see you soon then. Thanks. Sounds great. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.